Hey YouTube, what's going on? I'm super excited for this video because we are talking about risky natural hair care products and this is going to be a little bit different from my video because it's kind of a discussion, a little bit of a rant, an informational video too. It's going to be amazing. Let's just get straight into it. Now the word natural has been promoted so much like these past few years in regards to the beauty industry, but more specifically with, you know, the natural hair care industry. Now I want to say this, in the industry, there really is no clear definition of what natural really is. To be honest, brands can actually create their own version of natural. They can create their own definition of the word natural. For example, you might have, you know, brand number one, they just use oils and butters and they call themselves a natural brand. And then you have brand number two, they use oils and butters and a little bit of synthetic fragrance and they call themselves a natural brand. And they can be natural, like that is their own definition. So I want you guys to kind of not be so much focused on the word natural, but be more focused on the ingredients. Which brings me to this point. There has been a quote out, well not really a quote, but a saying out since I started my hair care journey back in 2008. And the, the saying is, if you can't pronounce it, you shouldn't use it. AKA, if you can't pronounce it, it must be a really bad ingredient or a bad chemical, you can't use it. I think that is the silliest thing that I've ever heard because you can't pronounce something, therefore it's considered bad for you. That's not the case. For example, dihydrogen monoxide. That's water. You know, every ingredient has a chemical name to it. And sometimes the chemical name tends to be a bit of a longer name, a little hard to pronounce, but doesn't mean that's bad for you. So I just want to clear that up. Now, for those who are creating products at home and purchasing products from small brands, I love small brands. I coach small brands on a daily basis. This is what I do. And this is one thing that I talk about in my consultations is do not cut corners on things that could potentially cause a safety hazard to your customer and also a hazard in regards to the performance of the product. I wanna give you guys this advice. Always, always use a broad spectrum preservative when you are creating a water-based formulation, whether that's a shampoo, a moisturizer, a conditioner, because what I'm seeing that is a lot of people who are trying to create natural products with natural ingredients, they're trying to preserve a water-based formula with things like vitamin E and honey. Those ingredients, though they are good ingredients, they are not strong enough to kill and to inhibit bacteria, mold, and yeast that can grow inside of a water-based formulation. So even though your efforts are to create a natural product, you're actually selling a product that can potentially be dangerous and hazardous to your customer. So with all that being said, I'm gonna provide links below for you guys. I think it's gonna help you with your formulations moving forward that have broad spectrum preservatives. You can learn more about it. So I'll have those links below for you to check out. Another thing is when it comes to separation in emulsifier, a lot of emulsifiers are gonna be things like glycerol stearate or mahindramonium methyl sulfate, you know, things like that. However, you have some people who, because they don't like the way those ingredients sound, they don't use an emulsifier, or they use some type of fufu emulsifier that doesn't create a stable formulation. Because when you are selling products that separate, not only is it not appealing to look at, but number two, it's affecting the performance of the formulation overall. So as a business owner, I don't want you guys to waste money on you know creating a formula and it's separating and then as a consumer for those who are buying the product i don't want you guys to waste your money by purchasing something online or even in a store that is separating and it's not giving you the performance that you paid for you know so i will have more information about that as well below so that's pretty much it guys i just wanted to share my thoughts on the whole natural product, I can really go more in depth about this and I can, if you guys have any requests in regards to this topic, please leave them below. But I have a question for you. What is like the biggest misconception that you've heard in your natural hair care journey that you 
figured out later on was actually a lie and it wasn't true and it was just that a misconception share below i look forward to joining the conversation with you guys be sure to follow me on instagram at charming 369 where i do q a sessions to interact with you guys and answer all of your questions on top of that be sure to check out the curly girls guide to hair care ingredients to learn more about ingredients inside of your formulas and how to really purchase your products effectively and don't forget to like this video comment and subscribe to my channel share this video and i will see you guys soon bye